Okay, today's good person to know is Liz Murray. Now, I've not personally met her, but I watched her story from homeless to Harvard on television, and she was so inspirational, I knew I had to do a video on her. So this video has been derived from footage from YouTube, and I've put the sources in the description box. So if you want to know more, you know where to go. Liz basically was born in a loving family, but her parents were drug addicts and they both developed HIV. And when Liz was 16 years old, her mother passed away due to AIDS, but that was her eureka moment as well, because she decided that she needed to change her life. She didn't want to be homeless anymore. And so she made a commitment to go back to school. She knew that education was the only way that she could change her life, but she was so far behind in her studies, she needed to do four years worth of work in two years. So effectively, she did a year's work in one term. And she was so committed to her cause that she had no excuses whatsoever. She went every single day without fail. And she ended up being a straight A student, the top of her class. She got a scholarship with the New York Times. And she also won herself a place at Harvard University. Liz has written a book called Breaking Nights, which I thoroughly recommend you read. It will just open up your eyes to her world, which for some people, we've got no excuses whatsoever for coming up with why we can't be bothered to do something. This video is filled with just Liz's words of wisdom and how you should be thinking about your life. So I hope you enjoy it. And thank you for watching. My name is Liz Murray, and I guess most people know about me because of the Lifetime movie that was created about me. I was born in the Bronx, and both of my parents were hippies. They had always used drugs. I mean, my whole life they had been getting high. Well, they were very loving to us, my sister and I. I watched them use drugs so frequently that that was just the way that our lives went. Eventually, both my parents contracted HIV. My mother was uh, without access to the medications they have now. She was. She went from having HIV to full-blown AIDS. I was 11 years old. My mother tried to sell my sister's coat to a drug dealer. She used to sell things around the house to get hot. And one night, she tried to do this with my sister's coat. And that night, the drug dealer, of all people, the drug dealer, he took some moral ground and said, he saw it was a child's coat. And he decided, I'm not buying that from you. I'm not exchanging it. And he gave her um, this coin. On the back of the coin, they had the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. She was frustrated she couldn't get the coke, and she came in and just kind of slammed this coin down. I'm 11 years old, I take it into my hands, and I remember rubbing my thumb over this little inscription, not knowing really what these words meant, but there was something about the mystery and the beauty of the coin and my mother's connection to it that made me keep it. I found myself at 15 years old, sleeping in New York City streets, in the parks and subway stations. What my mother did for me, and maybe it was the intense love that we had for each other because we loved each other so much, her dying, it unlocked my mind to begin to think of possibility in my own life. No matter what happened in my past, doesn't matter, whatever happened yesterday is yesterday. Today, this moment, right here, right now, I can do something different. Uh, my mother inspired me and taught me that. I buried my mom. I'm a high school dropout who's quickly becoming the same age as a high school graduate. I'm falling behind. Chaos is around me. I'm sleeping on the streets. And I have this coin. And one big piece about that was separating out, and I came to finally understand the meaning, the difference between the things I could and could not control. But if I could just pick the things that I had some control over and give the rest to something higher than myself, let it go surrender to it, focus on what I could control. And for me, that was education. I could show up at school every day. I could sit in the chair and come on time or early. I could get not only a B, but I could get an A. And I think just being able to identify that in the eye of a storm, you can't control all that stuff. Pick something. If you identify the thing that you can do and you stick to that, then by the grace of whatever else is around you and bigger than you in this world, you'll see your life begin to take a different shape. I kept telling myself before she passed away that I would do everything later. I'll get a job later, I'll go to school later. Everything was later, like pressing the snooze button on my life. And there I stood on that corner trying to make this decision. And I told myself, oh, I'll go back to school later. And an alarm bell went off. And I realized that my mother 
had been homeless at my age, living in New York City. Her mother had been mentally ill and sick and in unstable housing, and so on and so on. Somebody had to break the cycle. I realized basically that my time is limited, and I just said, you know, if I keep going like this, I'm going to end up wasting my life too. I thought, I need to go to school because I have all this potential inside of me and how, how is it ever going to become anything? Since I was going to be 17 by the time I began high school, I just said, so I'll do high school in two years. And with that thinking in mind, I remember knocking on doors in high schools. I'd dust myself off after sleeping on the train. I'd knock on doors at high schools after years of being truant. And I would ask them to accept me. I should have been applying to college. I was applying to high school. That's how old I was. And I was knocking on doors asking for them to accept me. And I went from school to school to school and I experienced a lot of rejections. But there was this feeling in my heart. And then I fell in love with what would be possible if I got straight A's for the first time in my life. So I did that. Well, at the end, as I wrapped up and I finished high school and all those applications got dropped in, I found this scholarship from the New York Times. So I applied to that, and all of this kind of happened at the same time. I actually had my interview at the New York Times the same day that I had my interview with Harvard. The next week, I found out that I was awarded the scholarship. Pretty soon after that, I, I got the letter. And when later on it came to applying to Harvard, I, I was a mess and coming from the streets, had never been to school, but I had two years of good grades. Should I apply to Harvard? It was unlikely, but I remember just feeling that love of thinking, well, it's possible. I know I sound pretty different from other people because it's such an intense situation, but I actually think I was really just like everyone else. No matter what was in front of me, I had dreams that I wanted to accomplish. I mean, don't we all? Really the most amazing experience I had was, again, this internal experience. I had these dreams, but living in that kind of despair, I let them begin to fade away. Have you ever felt hopeless in your life? Where you had something you wanted to do, but it felt so much out of your reach? I had this voice in the back of my head that I believe we all have. I call it the what if voice. And the what if voice said, what if you go to school? What if you change your life? What if you go back? And I let that voice fade in all of this sadness that I was in. So anytime that you are hunkered down in that feeling of despair, anytime that you may ever doubt yourself or believe for a second that there was a before and after to your potential in this world, I'm standing here today to tell you that your potential is timeless. You know that feeling where you just don't want to do something, or you just want to give up. I think to have perseverance is to know exactly how to overcome that feeling every time it hits you. Sometimes you have that really good day where it feels like anything is possible. And other days, who hasn't come through the experience where you cannot pick yourself up off the couch? And you start thinking that the dreams that you had in your heart and in your head were silly, right? And maybe you shouldn't have dreamed so big. If I could speak to people who are reaching for their own goals, I want to say in those moments where you might get discouraged, I know you've heard the words don't give up a million times. It doesn't have to be that your journey goes from A to B to C to D. Some people go A, they go E, they go back to B, they go this way. Sometimes when you experience obstacles, I sincerely encourage you to consider the possibility that it does not mean that you are off course. It actually is just what it looks like to get where you're going. But just remember that when you are suffering from those pitfalls, that's just what it looks like. That's just what it looks like to plow forward. So please, when you experience that, don't give up. You absolutely can accomplish your dreams. And when you do, may I also encourage you to turn around and ask yourself, okay, now that I got a chance, who gets to go? Everybody should get to go.